Hello everyone, my name is Space Mike, and I wanted to do a little monthly launch summary similar to the launch minutes on TMRO and keep track of who has launched what and how many times so that at the end of the year we can have a little award ceremony and honor the nations and companies that launched the most orbital rockets in 2018. So without further ado, let's jump into the launch report for the month of August. First up, we had a Falcon 9 Block 5 launch from SpaceX, and this took place from Launch Complex 40 in Cape Canaveral, Florida, and it launched at 5.18 Coordinated Universal Time on Tuesday, August 7th. The payload was the Mariputa, also known as the Telcom 4 communications satellite, which is headed for a geosynchronous orbit. SpaceX was able to launch it into a geosynchronous transfer orbit, which means that the satellite is going to use its own thrusters to circularize its orbit into its intended inclination and orbital slot. Mariputa was actually launched for Indonesia, and Mariputa means red and white, which are the colors of the flag for Indonesia. However, what I found most interesting about this flight is that it was the first reflight of a Block 5 Falcon 9, and it just so happened that this was the first Block 5 ever, which flew the Bangabandhu 1 satellite on May 11th of this year. It was the 15th launch for SpaceX this year, and they had a successful landing on their drone ship of the booster stage. It landed on the Of Course I Still Love You in the Pacific, and it was the 28th successful booster landing for SpaceX. This was the 21st launch for the United States so far this year. But not too long after, we had a Delta IV Heavy launch, which launched the Parker Solar Probe, and boy was this an amazing launch. Two, one, zero. This launch from Space Launch Complex 37 in Cape Canaveral, Florida on Sunday, August 12th at 7.31 Coordinated Universal Time, and NASA's Parker Solar Probe is going where no probe has gone before, into the sun's corona, at a distance of within 6 million kilometers, or 3.7 million miles. Seek to answer three very important questions about the sun. Namely, why and how is the solar wind accelerated to supersonic speeds inside the corona? What is the mechanism that heats and accelerates particles in the corona? And then what is accelerating some particles, very few particles, but some, to near the speed of light, creating highly energetic particles? Those highly charged particles from the sun can be very harmful to astronauts, as well as fry satellites and spacecraft electronics. So, if we want to protect future explorers and our modern infrastructure that we've come to rely on here on Earth, this mission will help us better predict solar flares and create improved plans for how to protect our technology and our astronauts. Also, I hope that understanding those near light speed particles may help us figure out how to do that with spacecraft, because we need some sort of real life equivalent of a warp drive or hyperdrive, so that would be really interesting if we could somehow replicate that effect. That would be amazing. But in any case, this was the 22nd launch for the United States this year. Next up, we have a Vega rocket from Ariane Space, and this was an amazing launch. I love how Vegas just take right off the pad, but of course that's because they're a solid rocket, at least the first couple of stages anyway. But in any case, this launch took place from the ELV launch site, also known as the Ensemble de Lancement Vega, or the Vega Launch Area, which took place at the Kuros Space Center in French Guiana, and this launched on August 22nd at 2120 Coordinated Universal Time. Vega's payload for this launch was the Atmospheric Dynamics Mission, also known as AOLUS. It's an Earth observation satellite that is the first satellite with equipment capable of performing global wind observations and will provide much needed information to improve weather forecasting for the European Space Agency. And AOLUS will be the first satellite capable of observing what the winds are doing on Earth from the surface of the planet well into the stratosphere 30 kilometers up using an atmospheric laser Doppler instrument. And it's going to communicate with the ground via S-band and X-band antenna. Something I found interesting is that in Greek mythology, Aeolus is the name of the ruler of the wind, so this is a very fitting name for this spacecraft. With this Vega launch, that makes four orbital launches for the European Space Agency so far this year. Let's just call it for Europe this year. 
Finally for this month, there was only four rocket launches this month, but don't worry, September and October are gonna make up for it. There are so many rocket launches that are planned for September and October and the rest of the year. It's gonna be crazy. But for this month, for August, the last launch of August was a Long March 3B rocket, which had an optional YZ-1 or Wangzheng-1 upper stage. Wangzheng means expedition, so it was an Expedition-1 upper stage. Oh man, and for this mission, they were actually launching two Beidou satellites, Beidou 3M11 and Beidou 3M12. The M stands for MEO, or Medium Earth Orbit. And this launched from Launch Complex 2, the Zhicheng Satellite Launch Center in Sichuan, China. And it launched at 2352 Coordinated Universal Time on August 24th. This launch actually provided us with a lot more info about that Expedition 1 YZ-1 upper stage. It's really similar to the Russian Fregat upper stage and the Beidou network once it's finished is going to provide global coverage someday and I really wonder whether or not that's going to complement the GPS network or if it's going to be its own independent network. It'd be really cool if it complemented GPS like the Galileo network does that the European Space Agency run. But in any case just the sheer number of launches that China has performed this year is insane. This Long March 3B makes 23 orbital launches for China in 2018 so far. Their previous record was 22 launches in 2016, so they have beaten their own record. So in summary, we had these four launch attempts, all of which were successful. And as you can see, China and the United States are charging ahead of Russia, who has held the record for the most launches for many years. But they actually haven't been champions since 2015. Oh man, so far this year, a strong tie has been held almost all year between the United States and China. So who is going to be the rocket champion of 2018? I don't know, but I would sure like to know what you think. Do you think it's gonna be China, the United States, or do you think Russia is going to have a surprise comeback? It's highly unlikely that that'll happen, but more on that in another video. Things are a bit messed up in Russia right now. In the meantime, though, thank you very much for watching this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell notification so that you are notified anytime I upload a new video. Share this video with your friends, and if you'd really like to help support the show, head on over to patreon.com slash epicfuturespace. Every little bit helps. But until the next time I see you guys, keep on moving onwards and upwards, and don't forget, Ad Astra to the stars.